You are listening to Claret and Blue, an Aston Villa podcast brought to you by Birmingham Live. Hello, welcome to the Claret and Blue plug podcast from Birmingham Live. My name is Matt Davis, filling in for Dan Rollinson today because he is off sick. So I am joined today, as ever, by Ashley Priest to talk all things Aston Villa and a bit of England. So, Ash, good morning. How are you? Yeah, all good, yeah. Just to begin to settle now on, on the Euros and stuff, and it's a week tomorrow, England are back in business at, at Warsaw. It's become a, a bit of, um, a prevalent friendly we always have every summer, so Villa back in match action next week, which sounds sounds mad really, but yeah, um, attention turns back to Villa. Yeah, a bit, bit, still a bit sore from the old England stuff on, on Sunday, I was there obviously, um, and yeah, it's just like, I know, I know Southgate's got his plaudits and he's, he's done well, but Real big opportunity missed for me. I think he got that one wrong, and Grealish's introduction was all too too little, too late, and he should be brought on much earlier. I criticised Southgate's use of Grealish over the tournament itself, and I still stick by that. I, don't, I know, I know, it's everyone's loving the English squad of late, but really big opportunity missed there, and and yeah, attention turns back to Villa, and hopefully have a, a good pre season. Yeah, I didn't mind him using Grealish as a sub as much as Villa fans would, which I can understand why, but in the final. Like Mason Mount was dead after 60 minutes, wasn't he? He yeah. hadn't touched the ball. I think totally. that's where Southgate seemed to fall down for me. Like not utilising Grealish or it didn't make any sense. I mean, it didn't make sense taking him off an extra time. It it, it worked, so fair play to him, but I didn't didn't get it at all. Um, just before we tuck into Villa more so, just talk to us about the experience of Wembley, um, the, the outside stuff, really. You saw some pretty uh, unsavoury scenes. What was that like? Just horrific. I mean, I got there for about one o'clock in the afternoon, but about, about two ish. Um, things are getting lively then. I had a wonder down to outside Wembley Way, and it was all, all, all okay. The old flare was going off, and fireworks went off, and it was all okay. And then the beer can started getting thrown, and then launching, getting out of the way, a, a bottle's being thrown at you. Yeah, it just turned, turned so nasty. And if I, my, my daughter's only young, she's only 18 months. If I, I took my daughter down there, I, I wouldn't have liked it at all. I've, I've, I've heard a few people walk away. The, they had ticking said, I ain't getting get in there. And, and yeah, as kickoff came, I mean, the hours started to tick by, beers getting drunk, and you know what I mean? And then it just turned so, so chaotic. I mean, I, I uploaded that video, which has gone viral, didn't it? And people walking past me, I was making my way to the, the media entrance. And next thing you know, it's, it's I'm getting out of the way of this, this stampede, as, as it were. Hundreds and hundreds went past me. Security guards went flying. It's a bit like a, they're trying to dodge them out of the way and trying to stop them. They just, Went through, piled through, barge past me, gates getting thrown, security scrap everywhere. They went up, went up the steps and just landed into the turnstiles. It was just like like a pack of wild dogs. There was loads got into Wembley. I think I seen Boris Johnson say yesterday, um, not only a, a small minority. Listen, loads went into Wembley. That was all in. You can see in the uh, the the aisles, the steps to lead up to the seats. It's all standing in there. It was. Yeah, not very, not very good at all. I mean, you know, shoddy, um, broken glass everywhere, like I've said, and and yeah, we all, all started off quite merry. But like, like you say, these eight o'clock kickoffs on a weekend, big game like this, it was a free for all, and it w- weren't very nice at all. I've seen Sky Sports abandoning their studio as well. Female um, reporters getting stick and ab- ab- abhorrent abuse thrown at them, and cans being launched into there. So terrible, to be fair. And if I had a young family, I wouldn't have liked it at all. Um, I met my cousin down there. He had a young boy, Isaac. He's, he's only young and he, he didn't like it at all. He was carrying behind his mum and dad. It's not nice at all. And I think England have lost a, f- a few young supporters based off that. You want to lock back down there again for an England game of such magnitude. But yeah, listen, it was all right. And then, and yeah, that was, that was the gist of it really. And then the game started. So I was, I was pretty attuned with that. The, the show before him was good, but outside, um, not very nice at all and back to the dark ages and I was on the train home afterwards um, I was in the middle of a melee I had to stop a fight this England, England fan he, he started on an Italian fan with, he was with his girlfriend uh, giving him abuse and I think his girlfriend made a sarcastic applause said very funny and then a fight happened then I was, in, I was trying to stop it I, I was dodging punches it was terrible um, and that was one in the morning getting home and and yeah, just that, that that just like sums it up for me. Not the game, not the experience. What you make looking back in years, years, years gone down the line, I remember the ugly scene. So not very good at all, mate. And and what, what I think the FA should be and the fans who are involved should be ashamed of themselves. So that 2030 World Cup bid, I'll see you later. That ain't going to happen. That's going to put in a puff of smoke for me. So 
so yeah, that, that's what it was like down there. And, and yeah, I'm just getting back to Villa Park. <laughs> that's, a, that's a bit better there. Yeah, like you say, 2030 might be dead in the water, which is such a shame. And yeah. you know, no one wants to see that at all. Um, if anyone's got any questions for us, there's a few dropped in, then put them in and we'll go uh, through them with Ash as we as we move along. Just reflecting on the tournament as a whole from a Villa point of view um, with me, me Grealish and Mings, starting with Jack. What do you think this means for Jack Grealish? He's had a big taste of the world stage now. Does it affect his future at Villa in terms of him staying, or are you still 100% he's going to be at the club next season? I wouldn't like to say 100% he's going to be at the club next season, because obviously it could, could change in an instant, can't it? But I'm pretty sure he'll be there. Um, in terms of what he's done for him, I think he's got a, a fire raising in his belly again. Um, I think he was underused. I think he was underappreciated. I think that hurt him. I was there for the opening game against Croatia. I could clearly see he was disappointed. He, he's, he was the first one to head down the tunnel. As others lapped it up and... That hurt him, and obviously, um, he came on against Scotland, got his start against the Czech Republic, okay, back in business here. Then he's dropped again for the Germany game, but he rolls his sleeves and think I'm going to be, I'm going to change the game here. Does that. Uh, yeah, fans fall in love with him, did well against Germany, and then he's dropped again. So I thought he took a confidence hit, um, especially against Denmark uh, coming on, and then he... He won't, he's probably one of his below, below, below standard there, and he get, gets hauled off again. Um, so, yeah, I think he's got, um, knowing Jack and, uh, and his mannerisms, I think he wants to prove a point again. He wants to be, I'm, I'm the best player in this group here. I'm going to show you. Um, so, I think that's a good prospect for Villa next season. I want to, he wants to announce himself again. I think he wants to have a full campaign, 38 games. He hasn't done that in a long old while. Um, so, yeah, I think that, that bodes well for Villa. I think. Like you say, it's only a short career. He turns 26 in September. I think he's coming into his prime years now. It's kick on time. I think Villa are going to benefit tenfold from that. And I think he's going to lead him into Europe. I can see that happening. Everyone knows what a quality player Jack is. And I think he wants to prove that with, with Villa. He had, he had the odd snub with, um, with England. But I think I think we're in for a really big season in terms of numbers and, and overall contribution from Jack. And I think that's in a Villa shirt, Matt. Yeah, and I suppose one thing this tournament did show is if you go to Man City, then you're not going to play every game like that. I mean, they've got obviously they've got Sterling and Foden, they've got De Bruyne, um, Bernardo, Silva. Exactly. So there's a good case there to actually stay at Villa if you do want to prove a point, isn't there? Exactly. I mean, like Phil Foden's their golden boy over there. De Bruyne, do you know what I mean? Players like that. Man City will have to have a little bit of a fire sale to, to, to get Grealish in and promise him the earth, and that ain't going to happen. So as much as it He's an interesting uh, opportunity, uh, intriguing opportunity for him to go and play with Pep and all this. And like I say, it's any Man City. I mean, achieving achieving what that with Villa, getting Villa into Europe and being adored as he is here. There's no better, there's no better, better feeling for me personally. But he wants to win titles. He wants to, he wants to um, avenge on Sunday. He wants to be in major honours, and and that, that, that's what he wants to look back at. And he wants to do that with Villa. So it's now it's up to Villa to uh, to prove to him. So. So we'll see. Um, that's that's my understanding of it. That's my how I'm feeling of it. I'm, I'm quite passionate about that, and um, that's going to happen. Yeah, the grass is always greener, is it? And I think he's got he's, he's onto something big with Villa. Yeah, I really do believe that. Uh, and on Tyrone Edwards here says uh, Ming stood up and being counted. I mean, you could argue he stood up and being counted and on off on and off the pitch. He, he did a job for England, and then he's obviously had his say on Twitter last night towards the Home Secretary, hasn't he? Yeah, what a player, what a bloke, what a represents. So proud he represents Aston Villa. Um, love everything about Tyra Mings. Not afraid to share his opinion, and he calls calls him out on it as well. Pretty Patel yesterday, and I love that. All these Twitter accounts from players, the majority are, are handled by someone else, but Jack is one, and Tyrone as well. They speak the truth, speak the mind, and they're not afraid to do that. And Tyra Mings. Um, yeah, just epitomise what he's all about. I think he did really well at the Euros. He's in for two games, two clean sheets, um, and proved himself on the big stage and off the pitch. He's yeah, colossal as well. So big kudos to Toro. Love everything about him, and I think yeah, I'm just so proud he's, he's in an Aston Villa shirt and such a great ambassador for the club. Uh, last one before we go into your questions that you're sending in. Obviously, um, England represents the international stage by Aston Villa, but also Argentina. Emi Martinez winning the Copa America alongside Messi. I mean, what a rise and what a story that is, really. What a story that is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I've really got him off Arsenal. That deal, like I mentioned before, surprised quite a few, surprised myself. And he's come in and 
oh god what, what a player one of the best in the league now and yeah the Copa America was great he was trash talking um the Colombians in the semis and then obviously going on to win it against Brazil in the final the weekend and what a player I think Lionel Messi he's Lionel Messi's best mate now helping him to a, a major title with Argentina and I mean yeah Emmy Martinez what, what a character first first and foremost what, what he's done for that dressing room as well everyone loves him up in more reef and and yeah, Villa are lucky to have him, to be fair. And what, what a master stroke that, that, that deal turned out to be. And yeah, I can't speak Holland for Martin. Absolutely love, love, love him to bits. And um, he's on for another big season as well. And yeah, he deserves everything that comes his way, Matt. He really does. Right, let's go into some questions. So do keep them coming. We'll go through these as we go along. I think we feel this this one before, but obviously it keeps uh, popping up from PJ about James Ward-Price. Um, it's pretty quiet on that front now, isn't it? It is, yeah, yeah. No, nothing new with there, Villa. Register their interest a few weeks ago now, and Southampton don't want to sell. Simple as that. I can't see Villa going in, going in, getting that deal done. To be fair, Southampton he's on a long-term contract at Southampton. Ralph Housen, who wants to build around him, so one that potentially has got got away. So Villa are looking at targets elsewhere. I expect Villa's business to ramp up now once the Euros is concluded, obviously, and I expect more names to be in the frame. Um, uh, it's the same situation with uh, Papay Sarbets. The French club um, deeming over twenty odd million pounds, and Villa aren't up for doing a deal on, on on them terms. So, yeah, I think we'll get some new names coming to fruition of late in terms of transfer targets. Obviously, Villa like to do the business behind closed doors and very secretive of that. And any leaks that get out, they, they do annoy you and Langer and the club. So, so yeah, and that's fair enough. So, so yeah, I, I can't see too much business being done, but I can see two, three additions happening in the next. Uh, couple of weeks. Uh, one here from uh, Danny. Obviously, fans will be allowed to see their team again now. Any news on pre-season tickets? Yeah, Danny. Yeah, great question. That nothing new. No, the club haven't released the details yet. Despite the game being next week, um, should have clarity on that imminently. To be honest, the club are putting on a live streaming service for fans. I think it's twenty quid for the friendlies, all of them. So make make that a what you will. Um, but yeah, tickets are uh, the club have announced them in due course. And I'll, I'll, I'll let supporters know as well how they can how can, they can cop them. And it's Bristol City, the latest one that's been announced on the 31st of July. So um, Villa did have plans to go to Europe, but they've had to, had to um, curb them because of COVID. So it's the, uh, yeah, the delights of Bristol, which is uh, as far as it's going to get for Villa. So, so yeah. Steve asked about Samata. It's sometimes hard to keep track of where a player is on loan or if he still plays for the club. Has, has he actually gone yet? Yeah, that, that deal's been done. 1st of July, that went through. £5.4 million pound Villa, Villa got in. For that, so we're talking about a three million pound loss there on, on, on Samata, scorer of that wonderful headed goal at Wembley, of course. And, um, and yeah, Villa have moved on to, from them days of, uh, of the bargain bucket, as it were. So, and yeah, yeah, we all wish him all the best. Uh, all what, not, good not good I think so, yeah, I think not up to the standards required. Um, I took a bit of time to settle in, I felt, I felt a bit sorry for him after Villa was struggling at that time as well. Uh, form wise, and he just didn't well, didn't go his way, and and yeah, just yeah, just circumstance, victim of circumstance there. And he's gone to Fenerbahce and to Pastures New. I think he's done okay there, but uh, yeah, Villa cut in the last season. Um, he's the latest one to leave, and Villa got a, a transfer fee for that. Phil and uh, Sean Kelly asking a very similar question about marquee signings to show they mean business. I mean, I don't know what qualifies the marquee sign now. If Tammy Abraham does or something like that, but do you think Villa are going to go big again, or have they done most of their Big business already. That's, that's um, a really good question, Matt. Um, well, Jack Grealish mentioned that the marquee signing, getting the Grealish approval, as it were. He commented on Villa's photo yesterday, but D being back at base, so he's excited to link up with him. Um, Villa have already gone big, haven't they? Smashing the club record on Burundi, yeah? and they've had bids rejected for Emil Smith Rowe. Don't forget, thirty million pound there was the latest offer that, that was that was not back and. Yeah, I mean, another marquee signing. I'm not expecting... It all depends in the market, to be fair. I'm not, I'm not expecting... I was told by those close to the club that Villa weren't going to be too busy this summer. So, make that what you will. But the, the market's evolving all the time. Um, players become available where they weren't before. So, so yeah, um, the Smith Road deal's dragging on now. I expect him to sign another contract at Arsenal. I was told that from day one, to be honest. But Villa have been persistent with that. Um, and yeah, I think probably Julian Alva, Alvarez, River Plate winger, talks are, um, are continuing with him uh, over a deal from River Plate. 
Um, so we'll, we'll, we'll see with that one. That could be the next to happen. But elsewhere, I think Villa need another centre half, Matt. Uh, Bjorn Engels was sold quite quickly. Um, I think they need cover there. Got a couple of injuries or suspension away from a potential disaster happening. So that, that'll be addressed. And yeah, be able to Villa to, to sign another creative player, a player Deansmith wants. And yeah, I mean, names in the frame have been mentioned before Dwight McNeil at Burnley. I think that's too big a deal to do. Um, he's in a long, long term contract there. And I think Burnley unwilling to sell. So, so yeah. Um, I'll keep boring away. I expect some new names to crop up, crop, crop, uh, crop up in the next few weeks. And Villa, Villa do want the business done early. So, so yeah, hold on, hold on to your hats, as it were. What do you make of the Alvarez one? He's, uh, I've just had to Google him. I don't mind admitting. I don't know too much about him. He's 21. And he's an Argentinian international. So he's obviously very talented. You do see players come in from South America and not make the impact immediately. And Smith, I think you've said on here before, Smith likes to sign players who know the English game like Buendia. Yeah. Do you see an element of the, you know, not necessarily gamble, but certainly if you do sign him, it would take time for Alvarez to bed in, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Smith mentioned to me about the sweet spot of his, his transfer dealings being British based, who played he played in England before, and that's what he wants to sign. The less ad- adaptation risk. Um, Douglas Louise, we've seen that. He had two years over in Spain. He come in, a bit of a slow start from him. Um, others as well, Bertrand Jura took a little bit of time to adapt. And it happens. Wesley the same previously and, and others. But, but yeah, I mean, Alvarez, a colleagues over in Argentina tell me talks are progressing. So no bid's been lodged yet. So we'll have to wait and see with that one. There is an element of a risk there, of course. But I think Villa will, will get the character references from from Emi Martinez and from Emi, Emi Burundi, who have been around him in the Argentina setup. So the groundwork's been, been done. Dean Smith wants good characters coming in who want to prove themselves. And he's built a squad of, of the, that calibre of player. It will all kick on next season. So, yeah, I mean, if it, if it fits the bill, I think Villa, 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 Villa will we'll get that deal done over the line and we'll wait and see in that, what happens in that, with that in the coming days. Tammy Abraham and Axel Turin-Zebi are both asked by Carl. Do you think the Euros ending and like eventually Maguire is going to go back to Man U and Chelsea will get their Euros players back and they won't need to rely on them just to even make up numbers in training to an extent? Will that maybe yeah. change the picture or do you think Villa have perhaps moved on from those guys now? I think they've moved on from those guys now, if you're asking me. Um, I've said this before. I think Villa will, need, will have a good look at Wesley over the, over the pre-season game, starting next week at Warsaw. Uh, see how that knee injury has affected him. Is he, is, he a, is he a £22 million player? Villa pay for him, or is he struggling and short of, of confidence again? So if, if that is the case, then Villa will go into the market looking for a, a new striker. But as it stands, that's not going to happen. And the Tammy deal is off. It's never been on um, this summer. So... So yeah, same with um, with the Tammy deal, like you say, and Tuan Zaybi, like you say, he's available for a loan, but I can't see him being loaned out until later on in the window. Um, so yeah, to Villa do want to act. I've been told that hasn't happened, and um, and yeah, but it's a deal that makes sense for me. Obviously, he's been at Villa before. I think he did really well in the Championship years, and he needs to find a club. Whether he wants to come in and play second fiddle behind us, we can't say. It's another thing, but but yeah, it's it's a deal that's there to be done if they don't want to do it, but they haven't acted yet. Uh, I'll skip back because I missed this one from all over about second choice keepers. They've loaned out a keeper this week. Do you, is there any names that you think might fit the bill or do they even need to sign a second keeper with Martinez doing so well? Yeah, well, it's quite telling. When uh, Kalinic went back to Hadrick Split, he gave an interview with, with Hadrick and he said, um, Villa wanted to sell me ages ago uh, before, the, before the Euros started and he, he, he favoured of going back on loan to Split and a deal was done after the Euros and he's got his wish. So that to be a bit of a compromise there. Villa wanted to cash in on him. Um, I don't think Split were willing to spend the money on him, um, but he wanted to head back there and have come to an agreement and he's on there on loan for another year. He's still got two years left on his current deal. So, so yeah, he, he's gone out and that points to Villa bringing another one in. Villa, uh, Dean Smith wants to go into the season with three three keepers. It'd be Martin, Estia and one more. I, I can't see Sini Salo or Akasanadi, the two 19-year-olds, stepping up. Uh, just yet, but I've heard some good things about Sinisalo, the finish under 21 keeper. But I think Smith wants another experience head there, uh, both on, on the pitch and off the pitch mainly. Tom Heaton was was a class act in and around the dressing room last season, despite not playing. I think Smith wants a similar character uh, in there as well. Villa's fighting on three fronts next season Carabao Cup, FA Cup, and Premier League. And touching touch wood now, if Martinez gets an injury, let's hope not. And you know, what I mean, we're in a sticky situation. 
should that happen. But um, Wayne Hennis is one that's been linked. Um, Chelsea are in for him as well. And that's a free agent, of course. He's an experienced uh, figure, Welsh international. He's 34 now. But, but yeah, that's one that could happen. Uh, whether it does, we'll see in the coming weeks. But but yeah, I think I think a keeper will come in, um, and it'll be an experienced one to, to help the dressing room and just to, just to be there. And should disaster happen, but yeah, with Kalinic heading out, I think another keeper comes in to, to fill his void. So one from Elliot here about Trezeguet. He talks a lot about new signings as wingers. Uh, he's been out for quite a while. When do you think he'll be back, and when do you think he'll be a hundred percent? Uh, yeah, uh, April, he got injured at Liverpool and Dean Smith said afterwards, you're looking about a nine-month nine month layoff for an ACL. So I don't expect to see him until the new year, to be honest. Um, I really don't. She's, yeah, good to news, really, because he's a willing runner, isn't he? He puts his all for the team and Villa will miss that. Villa will miss that. Um, and yeah, they're a bit short on the flanks at the moment. Obviously, they signed Buren Dia. He will play on the right side. You've got Troy, Al Ghazi and Grealish and... Other than that, they're a bit short, and hence why they want to sign Smith Rowe as a creative ten, which um, a deal is not forthcoming at present. But, but yeah, I feel for Trezeguet, but I expect to see him back in the new year. I don't think he go, he won't go on the African Cup of Nations due to be too short of fitness for that in January. So, yeah, putting a, put a time frame on that, I'll see him in, in January in the new year. Um, just going back to Grealish, because we are getting more questions about him. People asking about the next step with him. Um, Anthony asking about a new contract or any kind of developments about where we'll learn where he's going to be. I mean, what's going to happen there? Is he, I guess he's going to take some time on holiday now, isn't he? Yep, he left um, England camp yesterday. And he's on holiday to, for the next couple of weeks, I guess. And then, um, yeah, his situation will be ironed out. Obviously, a new contract's there for him to sign. The owners want to keep him at the club, Perslow like the same, and Smith. And just to stave off any interest from Man City, who are yet to offer anything for, for, for him and yet, yet to progress with any deal. So, it's as you were, really, and there's a new contract there for him. He's, he's, uh, his future will be ironed out in the coming weeks once he returns from holiday, and we we'll go from there. That's all I can put on as it stands. I don't want to beat around the bush or cherry coat it any other way. That's where we are. Billy's on holiday. Billy wanting to sign the new contract when, when he's back, and we'll move on from there. I expect him to sign that contract. Um, but like, like I've said, I keep saying this, it's down to the player. It's up to the player. Um, when the initial report, reports came out, I, I, I it was the agents who pushed that. Who pushed that because really she stuck at that time at the Euros was high. I think, um, and yeah, but like I said, the, the reports are untrue, completely untrue. And I think really signed the new contract and Villa looked to move into a, a new era. So, so yeah, that, that's where we are at. Goodish on holiday, have some time out. And rightly so, deserves it. Um, shouldn't be thinking about football at all now. We should be chilling out, having a beer or, or a couple, and and yeah, relaxing ahead of the new season. Uh, we're here for a couple more minutes. If you've got any more questions for Ash, uh, we can take a couple more uh, and before we have to disappear. One more thing on Grealish. Um, I think he's kind of, I hate for when they say misunderstood, but uh, he is a bit misconstrued. And we saw that really good video of him after the game, giving his boots to a kid and taking a photo with him. I mean, it, he's a good, he is a good bloke, isn't he, to be fair, Grealish, is what I'm angling at. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's... I don't know what a sort of encyclopedia is, but he's a... Uh... Yeah, he's cracking bloke. Yeah, big art. He's come from a really cracking family as well. And that's grounded him. And he knows where he's come from. He was one of them kids back in the day at Villa Park. Look, one thing and gals boots and something like that. Do you know what I mean? He was one of them. So, yeah, totally genuine kid. Um, so down to earth. And Jack the lad, Jack by nature. And he's one of them. And just like, like the fans, he's, he's a fan himself. And he knows he's looking to be, be where he is. And, yeah, I can't speak hard enough of him and his family. Um, just, just great people and yeah Jack's one of them One more here from Callum about the young players we get these questions a lot I mean which one if you had to pick out one that you thought was really going to break through next season as it stands today who would you be looking at? Uh, Chuck, Chuck Mawika kindly Chuck Mawika um, yeah Villa have got a big plan for him I think his first team involvement steps up another notch um, come, yeah come, come next season He's going to stick around. I think he'll play in the Carabao Cup rounds. See how he gets done against uh, men's men's football. He hasn't had a loan like Jacob Ramsey did. Obviously, he went to Doncaster a couple of years ago, and that that made him go from boy to man. And I think Chuck Wheaton will develop um, around around the logs of McGinn's and, and Grealish's at Bally Morith. And I mean, everyone's seen that video of him last week checking in for pre-season duty. And Smith said, "Put up some size, ain't you?" And um, yeah, he's been following Villa's program over the summer. He's been bulking up and. I mean, he's, he, he's a fine specimen of a 17-year-old. He's, 
he's built like um like a house kind of thing so uh so yeah i think he, i think his involvement gets ramped up i think villa want to work on his defensive side of his game um he's quite attack minded he's very much a number 10 as it were he's a box to box number eight but he's, he, his mindset is a number 10 to to score goals and to get on the end of things and villa want to um Improve his other side of his game. So I think Chuck Morica is the one to look out for this season. I think he's, he plays in the Carabao Cup early rounds. And you'll see him a lot, a lot over the pre-season friendlies, I'm sure. Others to look forward to, I think Kane Kessler. And right back, he signed a five-year contract. That's massive. I don't think Villa have offered a, an academy player a, a, a deal that long. I mean, Grealish was offered a four-year one previously and Kessler's got a five-year deal. So that just signifies his importance under Smith and Villa. Um, he'll be pushing Gilbert and Cash next season, I'm sure, but Alone will be will be discussed for him. Louis Barre, it's such an intriguing time for him, you know. 18 now. You've seen the others the same age as him on the on the world stage, Bellingham, Masuala, Germany, doing 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 good things. And Barry wants a piece of the first team action now. There's, there's no no denying that. And I think we'll see him over over the preseason games. See how he gets on against your your Warsaws and, and your and your Bristol cities and and yeah, big up to Smith and, and the coaching staff to see if he's got the credentials to be amongst the first team squad and Initially, I don't think that will happen, but it could be eased in over the course of the season, I'm sure. And you know, Like I say, he's Drew Grosper, but he's incredible talent. Everyone's seen what he did last season in the FA Cup, obviously, and he, had, he scored 20 goals in such a natural finisher. He's got it all, his pace in abundance, and he's something different, isn't he? So, yeah, um, excited to see what Louis Barry brings to the table for the first team. Right, we shall leave the questions there. Um, don't all log off straight away because uh, we're going to run a trailer now for our podcast on Thursday with Villa legend Ray Houghton and then uh, we'll get Ash's thoughts on it because he did the interview. So I'm just going to play the trailer and then we'll catch up with Ash again in a second. You know, when the fans are enjoying it, like, there's nothing better. When you, the fans are appreciating what you're doing and they're enjoying the football and they want to come to the games, you know, and they can't wait for the next one. That's the sign of a successful side, you know. I played in every game up to the final and then he changed his mind and changed the team. I was fuming, I must admit. I mean, I'm not going to stick there and lie. I think I played in seven semi-finals in ten years for four different clubs. I didn't like losing. I didn't want to be associated with losers. You know, to me, come second, you've come nowhere. You need to win it, you know. But I wanted winners around me. I wanted people who had that attitude. You know, show me someone who likes losing and I'll show you your loser. He was unbelievable. I mean, how good could he have been if he could have, if he could have trained? Gerard would say, right, we've got to walk through the corners and the free kicks because <laughs> Big Paul couldn't run. And then he'd go out on the Saturday and then man of the match, Paul McGrath. You know, so um, he was a phenomenon, uh, a one-off. I speak how I find, you know, Brian is a, a club legend, you know, for everything that he's done. But it was the first time where, as I said to you, we big run before, Ron was a winner and he spoke like a winner. Mm. Um, Brian didn't come across that way to me. He was more encouraging for me to go. You know, I think he was more into he, Yeah, he might be best all round if you go. Um, and, you know, you, you get that feeling and you don't want, I don't want to be at a club where I'm not wanted. You know, and that's for sure. Yeah, good value, Ryan. Right? I mean, he's a, he's a pundit today anyway so he's, he's a great speaker great talker of the game and gave some cracking insight into his days at Villa between 92 and 93 and 95 sorry um, yeah loads of funny tales there Doug Ellis as well I think Ray Aitzen was part of the the, um, the 90s squad obviously and he used to go drinking in, in midweek now and again on the on the rest day and Paul McGrath was there Steve Staunton all the lads Dahlia and Dino um, and Doug Ellis came in the one day and he said uh and Ray Aiton had about Bacardi and Coke and all the lads had the points. And he said, see, that's why I saw Ray Aiton from Liverpool. Professional as always, got a Coke there, you're all drinking. But little did he know, uh, Ray had a Bacardi in there. But yeah, loads of funny stories. He spoke about being um, left out of the team in the 94 um, League Cup against Man U. He was gutted about that. I mean, he played in every round. And then a big run went for Graham Fenton to start. And, and Villa won it in 94 and he was, he was gutted. He couldn't celebrate afterwards. He was quite bitter towards that, but... Yeah, I mean, he speaks so highly of Villa, his time at Villa. And yeah, he eventually left in 95. He didn't get on with Brian Little too well, um, but he loved Big Run. He loved playing for Big Run. It made, made him feel like a, a million dollars. So there's loads loads of stories in there. His time scoring, he was a hero for the uh, the Irish team at the World Cup in 94, as everyone probably knows. And and yeah, really good player to have and a great bloke to talk to. He came on the Clanterbury podcast, one of our many guests. And yeah, really lived his time from the... 
the concrete jungle in Glasgow where we grew up in Castle Milk to, to where he is now and everything in between. So yeah, really good listen if you want to jump on that and re reminisce about Villa in the 90s. Yep, check that out later in the week. I think it's out on Thursday. Um, and then we'll catch up with Ash next week, probably with Dan Rollinson if he's back off his sick bed or myself. So thanks very much to everyone who uh, listened or watched along and asked questions. And Ash, thanks very much to you as ever. Yeah, cheers. All well, thanks for everyone for jumping on and asking the questions. Yeah, it means a lot. Nice one. Thank you for listening to Claret and Blue and Aston Villa podcast. If you enjoyed today's episode, then please do let us know. We love hearing your feedback. We'll be back soon with another episode. But until then, up the villa. Yeah.